Hey team, Katie here from Equestrian Movement and today we're doing another training of You Don't Know What You Don't Know. So this training um, and the last few trainings have a lot to do with how we're going to incorporate games in our training with our horses so that we can get them into the social engagement system so that we're not um, just trying to upregulate into fight, flight or freeze and downregulate into relaxation. But so that we're actually going to be like firing some oxytocin. We're going to love on each other. We're going to enjoy each other's company. We're going to, you know, find that happy space of communion between the two of us. So one tool that we use when we are working on um, developing the quality of relationship here with building trust and confidence in each other and um, a particular game that we enjoy playing with our horses is what we call choice so what we do is we give our horses choices as to uh you know what they're gonna do they can choose whether uh so for example i use this with my horse fitty with regards to whether he needs a winter rug on or not and so if he doesn't want his winter rug on he will look away if he does want his winter rug on he will target and he's you know, been pretty accurate when it comes to predicting um cold fronts and rain it's normally the the days that he wants his rug on is when we're about to have a cold snap or we've got rain forecast we can use this in all sorts of areas of our work with our horses with um you know choosing what which brush we're going to use to choosing um you know we we bought some like fairy ones and different cat toys and things from the cheap shop and they can um choose which one we're going to use as our cueing for move away from like you would with whip pressure and choosing whether to use the whip or the the fairy wand so choice is just a fun way where you can use a little bit of imagination and you can give your horse options in the process of giving your horse options um you know you get to know more about each other like does your horse like soft brushes or hard brushes does your horse like to be warm or do they prefer to be like unrugged and cold not necessarily like they would be cold but do they ex prefer experiencing the cooler weather you know there's different ways that we're going to start to understand who our horse is and how to work best with them we can do that through games so just a little caveat you know when we give our horse choices we need to make sure that we can follow through on the ass that are going to be potentially um you know uh, dangerous if if the if we're asking them to do something that's going to be potentially impacting us on a safety level for both them and for us and for people around us we need to make sure that we can follow through on those choice as a way of playing with our horse and getting to know them better and switching on that social engagement system because our horses appreciate being hurt and um, the more we give opportunities for our horses to express who they are the easier it is to work with them and their unique personality rather than just trying to force them into submitting to us and doing things the way that we have been taught to do them or the way that we are trying to to do them ourselves so choice is one of our training tools in the holistic horse handling program uh, that builds on our other skills that we talk about to developing the powerfully connected equestrian team so we're going to have a look at some ponies making some choices so this is Zodi and I, one of our first training sessions together when we're using the brushes. You can see how we are using our two brushes and giving Zodi the choice to, to decide which one we're going to use on him. So um, Zodi has experienced uh, some pretty bad trauma as a young foal. He has a lot of mistrust in humans and what they can do to him. So working with him has been a bit of a time process with building up trust and confidence. And so understanding that there's a there's a pathway, there's a cause and effect when it work when working with humans is helpful for building that trust and confidence and that felt sense of safety. I'm going to give him the choice of which brush he wants me to use and so we're incorporating choice and consent at the same time when um, we're, we're doing this work. So
So if you're struggling, you know, just with getting consent as a tool to begin with, then offering choice where they're going to say yes to either or can be helpful um, because they're consenting like to one or the other. So uh, we're going to give him the curry comb, us uh, we're going to give him the option of the curry comb and the boy brush and then the one that he targets is the one that we use. And then we're also looking at uh, incorporating some of our, our relaxation skills. So you can see the tension that he has with regard to being touched and being groomed here. He does not feel safe around humans. He always wants to know where his exit strategy is. So this is just a fun game where we can incorporate some of our basic horse husbandry and welfare needs while um, you know giving him some power and control over what happens to him by choosing which brush we're going to use. So with Gunner, we're just like making things a little bit fun. We all know that working with heavy horses, uh, they can kind of lack some inspiration and, and motivation and work ethic. So breaking it up with some fun games can be really good for, you know, not making them sour on their work and uh, making sure that they aren't like seeing us coming in, hightailing to the other end of the paddock. We've picked up a couple of different toys from the um, dollar store and giving him uh, the choice of which one he wants to target. So it's just a fun way of, um, you know, it's another kind of style of equine enrichment. We're giving him some different stimulus, the different textures, the different uh, types of things. We've got the feather duster, the hobby horse, the fairy wand, and the cat toy. And so it's just, you know, different exposures, different stimuli, getting him. Um, doing something posit that's positive, positively engaging his brain without pressure, stress, or tension. And so that's going to help us build out the quality of connection and relationship and so make him more willing um, when it does come time to, you know, getting him to do some, some work in the saddle. So as we go to have a look at working with Sammy, you'll see why uh, we want to have a positive relationship with our training tools because if we're using these training tools for abuse, for pain, to control our horse's um, behaviour as a way of creating pain to make that choice, uh, then we can end up with a negative association with the tools that we're going to use. So working with Sammy here, we've got the hobby horse and the fairy wand and we're just giving him options which ones he's going to target. We're going to swap the hands around. You can see if it's like hand dependent, side dependent, you know, how close you're putting it to their nose as to how much effort they're going to be. Um, as you do this more often and you get a little bit more of that understanding in, in the animal, <laughs> the horse or the donkey and the cause or effect, you can start kind of rubbing them the... Um, whatever they've chosen over their body the same way that we did the brush and we can cue some of our away from aids that we do with our um, dressage whip into these other tools that you know we, we're not going to really be able to use the hobby horse or the fairy wand in any way that's going to um, create pain or punishment for the horse so it's a, a fun way of showing that we can still get responsivity to our cues and our words without needing to use pressure um, and in, in escalating pressure to get the yes we can get the yes by making by engaging our social engagement system making it fun for our horse making it a game so you can see that when we bring the dressage whip out, very not consenting, very much a no. He's completely taken himself away. He doesn't want anything to do with it. So rather than, you know, using these tools as um, a tool for punishment when they're not doing what we want them to do, we want to be building in a positive association and a positive relationship to them because they should just be used to create a word as a cue. The whip is a word, the word is away from. We don't need to escalate pressure into punishment to get them to move away from it. We just need to be clear in what the answer is. Like if we have our social engagement system online and our animals are keen and engaged and interested in learning and working with us, we don't need to escalate pressure. We just need to figure out the best motivation for them. So again, you can see very much Lee does not want anything to do with the dressage whip. And as we look at the next couple of toys that we play with, you can see that it's not due to um, fear or spookiness. It's just that he has a negative association and relationship with 
the web. And as we move into looking at these toys, you can see how games can, um, you know, also segue into confidence through curiosity and exposures to different things. We're always just looking at how can we make this fun? How can we make this enjoyable? How can we make this not so scary? Um, and build out our relationship with our animals. And, and as a result of doing that, we are developing willingness. It doesn't need to be power over submission or force. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy trails.